Musicatings. Musicatings wrote a couple of days ago. Salam to brother. I wanted to know why Jesus Christos drank wine, considering he was a Nazarene. And why did Kadamawi Hala Salase marry Empress Menon? Is there a significance to this? I also read in the Bible, no man should marry a divorced woman. Could you please enlighten me in this matter? Actually, these matters, because these are two separate matters, and we'll try to address one at a time. So taking the first issue of why Jesus Christos drank wine, considering he was a Nazarene, as you say. Perhaps you're confusing the meaning of Nazarite or Nazirite, Nazirite, and Nazarene with one another. But let's go to the scripture. Let's begin this off with the scripture, and let's go to the scripture concerning this particular issue. And hopefully in another part we will address the no man should marry a divorced woman um, idea that is not what the Bible has taught, but what some have interpolated, have interpreted into the meaning or have inverted the hermeneutic about. So we're going to deal with the Nazarene question. First of all, the drinking wine was a prohibition for the Nazirite, and that's according to Numbers chapter 6. But what you're speaking about is what the Gospel of Mateos or Matthew speaks on or what Matthew's gospel addresses. So after the flight, after the flight uh, to Egypt, there was a return from Egypt, and here's what it says in St. Matthew's gospel, chapter 2, verse 19, and we're going to read from 19 to verse 23. It says, But when Herod was dead, when that Edomite, that Indumean, when he was dead, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea, in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of God, of Elohim in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee or Galilee. Now here's the verse that you probably that you must be referring to in the scripture about Christ being a Nazarene. It doesn't say Nazarite, but it says Nazarene. It says, And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Now, there's a few ways to, to simply and accurately address this. But the first thing we have to do, to do is to, to pay pay attention. The price of truth is paying attention, that it says Nazarene, and you even said in your question Nazarene, which was correct, but the confusion is with the idea of being a Nazarite. Many have said that a Nazarite and a Nazarene is one and the same thing, and what they're forgetting is our story or history. I mean, what's so interesting about this whole story, it actually connects with what we've been teaching on in some of the posts concerning the two Israels and concerning Egypt and concerning Egypt and Israel's common enemies, the Hyksos, and who are the Hyksos, that Herod, being an uh, Indumean, Indumean was a New Testament name for Edomite, and Edomite are descendants of Esau or Esau, and Esau mixed and mingled in with a lot of peoples that we were told not to, like the Canaanites, and he also had a daughter of the Ishmaelites and others. So you really have to get a background on who the Indumeans and Esau, many of our so-called Hebrew Israelites, black Hebrew Israelites, and especially the extremists out there, the extreme, the what we call the, the Hebrew niggers or the 
nigger Jews out there, they they have a big they they have a hard on for for Esau. Everything Esau, 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 Esau. Everything is about Esau. And what they don't, what they fail to understand is that Esau doesn't stand alone. Esau gets down with those other haters and enemies of God's people. So Herod, the one who sought Christ's life, he was an Indumean. His son ruled, as it says in verse 22, Archelaus, he reigned in Judea in the room of his father. He was appointed by the Roman authority, by Rome. In other words, Rome basically pointed him, you know, appointed him to that throne because uh, Judea was basically under Roman occupation. So we have to kind of understand that history there. But about Nazarite, first of all, Nazarite is different than Nazarene. To get to the root of Nazarene, first of all, Nazarene, to say Nazarene, that's a patronymic, a patronymic for the inhabitants of Nazareth. In other words, it's a name that is given to those peoples who inhabited a place called Nazareth. An inhabitant of the town of Nazareth, Jesus and his followers were called Nazarenes because Ius or Jesus, Jehoshua's home, was Nazareth. Now, Nazareth signifies a thought that belongs to that which is in consciousness Nazareth signifies. So we have to find out, well, what does Nazareth signify and get into the, both the meaning of the word. The thing about Nazarene and Nazarite, which is similar, is the root word with the main the main uh, tricontinental root, the N, the Z, and the R, which means separated, one who is consecrated by a vow, that's the definition of Nazarite, abstinent, one who is set apart by choice, one who is devoted. But now Nazareth means a branch, offshoot, a sprout, verdant, like grove, as a covenant, watch, guarded, defended, preserved. Nazareth should not be confused with Nazarite, since in the Hebrew, the two names are quite different. The two names are quite different when we go to the Hebrew. So when we go to the Hebrew root of this, the two names, Nazarite and Nazarene. Now there's a similarity between the two. But to confuse the two, as many of us previously had done, you understand, before we really start to study and, and find out the half of the story that we're not told. But the important thing about Nazareth is that it was a town in Galilee. It was the boyhood home of Jesus, according to Matthew 2 and 23. Now, the, the meta, or the metaphysical of this is that the meaning of Nazareth, Nazareth, is a branch, offshoot, a sprout, arenguade, or green, shiny, shining, watched, or that which is guarded. A synagogue is a place of worship, a mikrab, and the senbet, or the sabbath, is a state of rest, the state of repose. Now, in Luke 4 and 16, it runs and reads that, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and he entered, as his custom was, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up to read, or what's known as the Aliyah, to read. Now, this means that when we begin to awaken to the truth, that we are Bani Elohim, or children of God, sons of God, branches of the one true vine, when we take the attitude of elot or worship, worshipfulness, of watching, of centering the mind's eye on the Christos truth, on the messianic truth, and rest in that consciousness, we are receptive to the inspiration of the manifest of the Ruach of the Spirit. Now, here's the key about it, that Nazareth or Nazareth was a despised place. It was a despised part of town. It was like the ghetto. It was almost like, we can say, like Jamaica in that sense, and the parts of Jamaica that received the message, the spirit of Rastafari, 
prior and first and carried it and brought it to on a level world consciousness was a despised place, was a downtrodden place, was a look down on place. It was like ghetto. You understand? It was like the ghetto. Yet, there's a very important truth that's often overlooked about that despised place. Because the things of the Spirit of God are considered foolish by the natural man. And much is the same with Rastafari, the true Rastafari. The true Rastafari are looked down on and thought foolish by those natural men and people.